How to protect your money in a world of out of control bankers. Now, you might have heard a saying, or maybe not, Molen Labe. Well, it stands for come and take it. Uh, if you've been paying attention at all in the last couple of weeks, you've seen that whether you're a citizen in Canada donating 50 bucks to a campaign or you're a sovereign nation with nuclear weapons, your money is not safe. If someone can stop you from using your money, is it really yours? Well, um, one of the biggest objections that I hear to potential solutions to help you protect your money is that, yeah, well, the government's just going to make it illegal. Well, in this video, I'm going to break down some historical precedents to show you why that saying, Molen Labe, uh, where it came from, why it makes sense, and more importantly, what you should be doing and thinking in order to protect your wealth so these out of control bankers don't take it from you. So let's go. All right, welcome back. If you are new to the channel, my name is Mark Moss and I make these videos to change the way you think about money because almost everything you have learned is wrong. And as I said at the intro, the last couple of weeks have proven to you that everything you know about your money in your bank account is also completely wrong. Now, real quick before I jump into it, I do wanna say again that we have just opened up tickets to the Market Disruptors Live, our second annual event. There's a link down below. 15 of the top speakers in the world coming together to tell you what they think is going to happen. And of course, most importantly, what to do about it. Uh, geopolitics, macroeconomics, stocks, bonds, cryptocurrencies, um, health, passports, freedom, etc. We got George Gammon, Harry Dent, Daniel DiMartino Booth, uh, Jeff Booth, Greg Foss, and so many others coming. There's a link down below. Check that out. All right, now let's go ahead and jump into the video. All right, so um, at the intro, I used the word molan labe, and it comes from a Latin word, I believe, and it really means come and take them. And it was really came from a story back in about 450 BC um, at the War of Thermopylae. And you might remember this story if you watched this movie, 300. Um, so it was popularized in that movie, 300. And basically, you had King Xerxes coming um, and the Spartans tried to ho hold him off in a little valley. And Xerxes said, look, we have way too many people. We're going to run you over. Everyone's going to die. Lay your weapons down and maybe we'll let you live. And they said, come and take them. And they did. Uh, you probably know the story. If you haven't, go watch that movie 300. But let's talk about this in reference to where we're at today. Like I said, whether you're in Canada donating 50 bucks to a uh, trucker rally and getting your entire financial system or your, uh, finance, your accounts shut down, or you're a one of three global superpowers with nuclear weapons and you get your bank accounts frozen too. So Bitcoin, we're talking about Bitcoin. You can sub in cryptocurrency equals freedom. So what do I mean by that? Well, there's a saying that we talk about in Bitcoin. It's not your keys, not your coins. Now, when you put your money into the bank, you've now given your money to the bank and now it's their money to decide whether they want to um, allow you to withdraw it, allow you to transfer it to somebody else, or even allow you to ever get it back again as people in Canada found out. And like I said, now people in, um, in Russia find out. Now, if you had that cash, if you'd gone to the bank and withdraw the cash and you had stuffed it under your mattress, well, that's your money. And you can go take that money, carry it, put it in your pocket. You can pass it out to whoever you want and they can't stop that, which is of course part of the reason why they don't like that. Um, in Bitcoin, we say not your keys, not your coin. The same is true. If I have possession of my private keys for my cryptocurrency, then nobody can take them from me. Nobody could stop or block or prevent me from using it. However, if I keep my Bitcoin or cryptocurrency on the exchange, then that exchange, just like a bank, could then decide to censor me and say that you can't withdraw it, you can't spend it, you can't transfer it to this person, etc. And so we've really seen now on a global scale, we saw it in Canada, but even on a global scale now that Bitcoin, Ethereum, cryptocurrency are going to donations to get help the war effort in Ukraine. I think it was as of uh, yesterday at the time of this recording, it was like 50 million had already been sent to Ukraine in cryptocurrencies to help this. Um, now, I do want to say, though, it's uh, Bitcoin, not crypto. And the reason why I would make that distinction, and I know, go ahead and fill up my uh, comments with a bunch of uh, hate. I, I'm ready for it. But what I would say is that unpopular opinion here, unpopular opinion, not everything needs to be decentralized. Now, this is a decentralized revolution. There's been five technological revolutions that changed the course of humanity. Industrial revolution, steam engines and railways, um, electricity and steel, oil, automobiles, and uh, microprocessors, telecommunications, and now the decentralized revolution. 
but not everything needs to be decentralized, all right? What needs to be decentralized is the money. If we, we say we, if we can fix the money, we can fix the world. What we need to do is we need to fix the payments. And the reason why, without having freedom of my money, without having the freedom of payments, there is no freedom at all. So for example, I'm a content creator. If my credit card company or YouTube says, nope, we're not gonna pay you anymore because we don't like your content, well, there's no freedom with that. Now I can't make money doing what I want. Now this happens all the time for things that are even legal to do. So for example, the payment credit card companies, Visa, et cetera, they shut down people's like OnlyFan accounts. Um, they deemed it to be, you know, uh, whatever, high risk, adult content, I don't know, it's legal. Um, there's been stories of them shutting down um, gun shops, even though guns are legal in the United States, but they block that. And so they move into this like un unelected, undemocratic process. Um, and so it, without freedom of payments, there is no freedom at all. Um, the freedom of speech, but if I can't pay for a computer, how can I put my speech online? If I can't pay for pamphlets, how can I get my word out there? You get the point. Uh, freedom of assembly, but if I can't pay for gas in my car to drive to the assembly, if I can't pay for food at the assembly, if I can't pay for a hotel room, how can I assemble? Uh, freedom of religion is guaranteed, but if that church can't pay for its building or pay its staff, or I can't send money to that, uh, to that church, how is there freedom of religion? You get the point. All right, so now that we've sort of established that if you don't have your asset, whether it's your gold, if you take possession of your gold, that's your gold. If you buy it through an ETF, someone else has your gold. If I have cash at home, it's my cash. If it's in the bank, it's the banks. If I have Bitcoin that I hold, it's my Bitcoin. If it's on an exchange, they have it. Now the attack vector is they want to take away your ability to take custody of your own assets. So they don't want you to have cash. They want your money in the bank. So of course they can censor you. They don't want you to hold your gold. They want you to put it in a bank. They don't want you to hold your Bitcoin. They want on exchange. That is the attack vector. That's the most likely point of attack because if they have custody of your assets, they can censor you. So we've seen recently a uh, rep from Ohio, Davidson, he submitted a bill called the Keep Your Coins Act. He put a bill in place specifically so that it's legal for you to custody your own assets. In the United States, where we have the strongest laws for private property, he had to submit a bill to make it legal for you to continue to own that. Pretty interesting, but we can see he's seen where the attack vector is coming and he's trying to circumvent that. Uh, we've seen that President Biden, the Biden administration announced a few weeks ago that they're going to put executive orders into place to regulate cryptocurrencies. They haven't told us what that was. It's an announcement of announcement. Um, we've seen the Treasury, Janet Yellen, says they have an unlimited budget now to censor, to stop cryptocurrency transactions. And so again, we don't know what the attack vector is, but most likely they're coming for the custody in the European Union. They've been talking about that as well. But this attack on custody is actually somewhat new. All right. For thousands of years, we've had commodity money. So gold is a commodity. We've had commodity money. Before gold, it was feathers, it was rocks, it was seashells, you name it. But if I had the feathers, the rocks, the seashells, or the gold, I had it and I kept it. It was decentralized. I can go gather the gold. I can go gather the rocks or the feathers. I kept custody and we transferred when I gave it to you. You had custody. That's how it's worked for thousands of years. But things changed in about 1933. So we were using gold. Gold was big, heavy, clunky. We put it in the banks. They gave us paper gold certificates. They were claims on gold. And in 1933, the banks shut down for a week. They went on a bank holiday. And when they opened the banks back up, you weren't allowed to get your gold out anymore. All you had now was these paper gold certificates, these claims, and like I said, you couldn't even claim it. And on top of it, they, when, you, when they took it from you, the paper gold certificates were 20 of them for an ounce of gold. After the banks opened back up, it was 35 of them for an ounce of gold. So they also stole the value from it at the same time. And that's really where it started. It became illegal to own gold for American citizens to own gold, which is crazy. Um, then in 1970, we had the Bank Secrecy Act, and this also put even more restrictions. So now uh, American citizens couldn't transact with more than $10,000 of cash. All right, so that's where this really came into place. They started squeezing what you can do with your own money. Now you can't transact with your own money over 10,000. Now, I do wanna say that because of inflation, remember our dollars are losing value, that 10, when this law was put into place in 1970, $10,000 is equal to about 
$80,000 today. So because of the inflation, the debasement, uh, they should have continued to raise that level, but they've kept it at $10,000, which is kind of crazy. But things really kicked into overdrive in 2001 under the Patriot Act, of course, when the Twin Towers fell, the government had to do something, right? They had to protect us and keep us safe. So what better way to protect us and keep us safe than to take away a lot of our freedoms, right? Makes sense. Um, free is dangerous. I mean, you can get hurt. Things could happen. If we put you in a cage and give you one meal a day, you're very safe. See how that works? And so that's where 2001 is where things really came off the rails. They've done away with a lot of things that are guaranteed to us by our constitutions, things like due process. Like, um, how about uh, the Fourth Amendment that I'm free of unwarranted search and seizures. Well, if I keep my money in the bank or my Bitcoin on an exchange, well, now they're passing laws where they can inspect every account, every single transaction up to 600 bucks. But I was supposed to be protected against that because I haven't done anything wrong. It's unwarranted. They don't have a warrant for that. About the Fifth Amendment, the right to due process. How about, uh, remember that thing where it was like used to be innocent until proven guilty? No, 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 not anymore. There's no due process now. Now you're just guilty. You haven't done anything yet. It's like, uh, I think it was that movie with Tom Cruise, Minority Report, um, a pre-crime. You, you might do something wrong. There's potential for you maybe could do something wrong, so let's go ahead and act against you right now. The thing is, is that we have laws for crime. Now look, they're saying that it's for terrorism. We have to stop terrorism. They're saying we have to stop money laundering. We have to stop tax evasion and, you know, those things sound bad and I guess I'm against those things, but the thing is, is that we already have laws against those things. So if you do those things, it's illegal and you pay a penalty for doing that if you get caught, right? You're supposed to be innocent until proven guilty, but they are now censoring everybody. They've taken away everybody's rights because a few people might maybe one day potentially do something wrong. Now, um, those people, those terrorists, they might also use a cell phone. They might also drive a car. They might even eat some food. Should we just go ahead and take away all that at the same time? Pretty interesting if you think about that as a thought experiment. Now, there's something known as mission creep. And so what this means is that um, things that sometimes start with good intentions just continue to grow and then they maybe grow to be bad things. And so like I was saying earlier, we have like this bureaucratic censorship and so we're now seeing businesses, private businesses, work with banks to censor your activity. So again, like an OnlyFans account or a gun shop or whatever it is, those are legal businesses to do, but they're not favorable. And so now this bureaucratic process can move to censor you. They're regulating what they, they call high risk accounts. Um, and if you think that's bad, just wait until you see what they do with central bank digital currency, CBDCs, which are programmable money. So instead of them having this manual process where they have to do things, they can just program the money. So when they give it to you, they can say, hey, if you don't spend this money by Friday, it comes back to us. Um, oh, by the way, you can't spend it here, here, here. You can not spend it here, here, here. Um, oh, you're a minority group or an ethnic group or whatever. You get some reparations for that. They can do all types of behavioral modifications with that money. And even even worse than that, it becomes the ultimate honeypot of power. So if you put, if you centralize everybody's data, everybody's information, everybody's money, all in one central location, that's what we call a honeypot. Don't you think a lot of people would want to get a hold of that? Now you think about criminals, criminals would want to get a hold of that, right? So like Experian, um, the largest database of all people's credit um, history was was hacked, the largest breach in history at the time. Um, and you think about criminals wanting to do that, but criminals are smart these days. Criminals now find their way into politics and banking. And you're handing over the keys to everybody, everybody's money, everybody's transactions, and you're giving them the power. It's pretty dangerous. Now, Henry Kissinger warned us of this. He warned us, he said that if you control the food, you control the, a nation. So think about what the FDA does to control the food. Um, if you control the energy, you can control a region. So think about that. If you control the energy, so think about what's happening in Russia with Europe being dependent on energy. Think about it from a bigger standpoint, ESG. 
They're using ESG to control the energy of the whole world. Think about that. And if you control the money, you control the world. He warned us what the attack vectors are, and now we see them all playing out step by step. And really what they've done is they've weaponized the system. And this is the real risk here. The real risk is that your rights are completely cut off when they can stop your accounts, when they can freeze your accounts, when they can censor your accounts, your rights have been taken away with no due process. And like I said, it enables these global criminals. The criminals, they've gotten smart. They've just decided to infiltrate politics and banking. It's much easier for them to do that. And the thing that um, you need to be aware of is that you might be for cutting off payments to the truckers. You might be for that, and that's okay. You might be for sanctioning Russia or sanctioning the people of Russia. You might be okay with that. But just know that these things can always be used against you as well. No matter what position you take, you're always gonna be on the opposite side of somebody else. If you're a Republican, there's Democrats. If you're liberal, there's, pe there's conservatives. If you're pro-life, there's people that are pro-choice. So no matter which side you find yourself on, there's always going to be somebody on the other side. You're always going to be on somebody's wrong side. And so you have to think about these weapons, enabling people to have these weapons. Now, what's happening also is that as they're um, kicking people out of the financial system, as they're censoring people's transactions in Canada, all these citizens lost their bank accounts. Now they're forced to find a way to live without that system. In Russia, when you kick them out of the global financial system, they don't just die? No. They just figure out how to work without being in that system. Now, what they're doing is they're unbanking, if you will. Now, there's, uh, per the UN reports, there's about 2 billion adults in the world without access to banks. They don't have permission. 2 billion, that's more than half of the adults in the world. And now, we're unbanking Canadian citizens, we're unbanking Russians, and we're unbanking Ukrainians. And what they're all doing is, like I said, they're forced to find another way. And that's exactly what they're doing parallel worlds that are popping up. And that is the key and that's how we win is that we build parallel systems. So when we can't change the old system or we can't work within that system, that system is too restrictive for us, it's up to us to go find another way. Now the payments, like I said, fix the payments. The payment sits at the base of this. Without the freedom of payment, we have no freedom at all. Basically, what the government says is that if we don't give you a permit, if you haven't applied for a permit to go to the park and have a birthday party, then what you're doing is illegal or it's black market. And so uh, we are forced to go build this parallel world. Now, one of my favorite quotes from Socrates right here, he was a pretty smart guy, he said that the secret of change is to focus all your energy, focus is a superpower, focus all your energy not on fighting the old, but on building the new. So for example, me personally, I'm not happy with the public education system. I'm not gonna try to change it, I'm not gonna go join the school board system, I'm not gonna focus any energy on doing that, but I can pull my kids out and I can go send them to like a homeschool pod or a school that I want. Now, if I have freedom of payments, I can do that. I'm not gonna go try to change the legacy media, how corrupt and censored that is. Instead, I'll just go do my own media over here, and as long as I have freedom of payments, I can do that. I don't need to go change the healthcare system. I can just opt out and I can just go pay my own doctor over here as long as I have the freedom to do that. I don't need to fight the old system we can just go build the new, and that is exactly what happens. As we do that, it takes away their power. They only have power to control us in the system they have. But if we're not in that system, they're powerless. They have no power, and that is how we can truly be sanction-proof. And so, I'm gonna go back and I'm gonna talk about this story one more time. You might have seen this canon before. You might have heard the story of come and take it. You maybe don't know where it is. It originally comes from what's known as the Gonzales flag. This is from the early history of the United States when Texas was still part of Mexico. And at the time, the Texians, as they were called, um, were still part of Mexico. And Mexico had given the Texians at the time a, a little old cannon. And the little old cannon was more symbolic than anything. It was really small, it didn't really work that well. But of course the Texians, they started to want more independence from Mexico. They said, you know, no taxation with representation. Hey, you're down there in Mexico. You don't know what we want. You don't know what we need. We need to have more freedom and independence. And so the Mexicans said, then give us back our cannon. Now, I don't know why they wanted the cannon back. Like I said, it didn't really work. It was small, um, but it was, like I said, more probably more symbolic. They said, give us the cannon back. And so 
the Texans said, well, let, 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 I don't know if we're going to give it back. And so what happened is the Mexicans were uh, camped on one side of the river and the Texans got the little old cannon and they put it on a little cart and they towed it out to where the Mexican um, army was camped out and they fired the cannon on them and they said, come and take it. They went back to the Alamo. The Mexicans came surrounded the Alamo. It led to the rally cry um, that led to the um, revolution that led to America finding its freedom from Mexico. But it all started with the same thing I opened up with, with the Spartans saying, come and take it. And so what's the point of that? Well, if you hold your money where you have custody in Bitcoin, cryptographically secured, the governments cannot take it. And so uh, the number one objection I hear is, but won't the governments make it illegal? And for that, I would say, come and take it. Let me know what you think about that. It's a pretty good story. Uh, do you see the ability to have custody being the attack vector like I talked about? Give me a yes or no down below. Of course, as always, give me a thumbs up on this video if you like it. If you don't like the video, that's okay. Give me a thumbs down, but at least give me a, a comment why. Um, that's what I got for you today, all right? To your success, I'm out.